I have a message and it's relevant for this day and this time. The subject this morning, don't let the green grass fool you. It's easy to get caught up in what looks good, what's easy to get. But sometimes, let me just, let me change that to all the time. We need to consult God before we make moves. We need to consult God and allow him to lead us. I'm going to start the scripture this morning, listen this morning in Psalms, first chapter, first verse, to the third verse. It reads, This is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the water, by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and well, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. When you're looking at making choices, you know, God, as, as we're getting toward the fall, and I was studying yesterday, I, God just brought a memory back to me. And it was how, when we were growing up, mother would, she'd get us a little pe peaches or uh, if I get uh, uh, apples from somebody. And she would can. Now she would cut the pears of people everywhere and peel it, then cut them, slice them up, and make pampers with them. But she would also take the peel, boil it down, squeeze the juice out, and make jelly. A lot of people who didn't have who, who had more than they needed might have skipped this part. They might have made a choice. I'm, I don't want to fool with that. They throw the hoes away. But mama knew that we didn't have a whole lot. And sometimes, during that winter time, we were going to need that jet. So she had preserves. When we came and we had nothing but them biscuit and preserves and them biscuit and jelly, sometimes that's all we had. But we had enough because mama made choices. Mama made a decision. Now it might have looked easier. The grass might have been greener just to throw that away. Don't waste your time with them peels. But you see, we have a decision to make every day. Every day and every moment of every day, we make a decision about something. And most of the time, we make it before we consult God. And when it go wrong, we, no, I should have prayed about that. I should have asked God. It's easy for us to go around and find something. You, you see people all around us that are doing better than we are. Drive a better car. And, uh, you, you know how people get caught up in drugs in, in the north? They, they have kids running around doing the delivering thing because they tell them, you ain't going to get in trouble. You're a juvenile. That ain't going to bring a ball you. They put me in jail for that. I just need you to take this package from here and you take it over there to John, and John don't know what to do with it. But you better take it now. Well, let me find out you ain't take that to John. And my daughter was coming back from New York. Yes, well, Friday. Spent all day up there because it was flooding up there. But she said she was in the line of TSA. And there was one young lady, her and her boyfriend, somebody that was with her. And they pulled her suitcase out and inspect, to inspect it. And as soon as they pulled it, she went to crying. Can't be a good thing when that happens. You know something's wrong. She said she didn't stay around to figure out what happened. She got out of there, which was a good thing. But somebody probably had made a choice to put something in that suitcase that shouldn't have been in there. We make choices because it's easy. Somebody going to give me $10,000 to go from here to Meridian? That sounds like a good thing to me. The grass is green over there. But you know what other grass is green? Right from here, no longer 45 miles, there's a place up there in Sumter County, email, that they bring down 
contaminated soil and other things. And they bury it there. And when they get through with the site, they put grass seeds over it. It look good. All that green grass growing all over there. Somebody might want to let their cows out there and eat. But if they let them out there, the next generation might come with three ears, or two eyes, one up here and one down here. You don't know. The green grass, may be, it may look better, but we need to keep with what brought us here. That was dealing with whatever came and standing on the shoulders that got us here. Mama, Daddy, and they stood on the, on the promises of God. God said, I will lead you. I won't ever allow anything to happen to you that we can't deal with. The worst this world can do is send you home to me. But look, the minute we make a decision that's out of God's hand, then we leave ourselves open to anything. If I walk out of here, let me just put this out there. If I walk out of here, or I make a decision not to be here, and God has told me, you need to be here too. If I don't come and something happens to me, you think I, 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 I'll I see God in peace? If I don't go and tell the governor what God has told me, deliver the word to the governor, do you think I will see God in peace? If so, we, we count on the goodness of God to get us from the morning we wake up till the evening when we lay down again. We count on the goodness of God. But God is counting on us. And we count on somebody else. Well, you know, Ann can do it just as good as I can. Ann can preach. I ain't got to be there. That's a long way to go. Uh, what about Sister over here? She got a word she can deliver. Barbara can deliver a word. God, I, I just, I'm just too tired. I just don't feel like it today. Because, you know, that football game come on at 12. I ain't going to be back by 12. And I was supposed to get with Curtis and some more folks. So I, I, I'm just going to let somebody else handle it this time. Lord, we got a little get-together we planning. God don't care nothing about your get-together. He cares about your obedience. When, when Joshua said in 12, the 24th chapter that as for me and my house, as for me and my house, see, we have to stand up not only for ourselves, we have to stand up for our house, for those around us, for those that we have always, I was talking to somebody yesterday, no, yes it was yesterday, a cousin called me from Cleveland, we were talking, we talked for, my wife said, what y'all talking, y'all know I don't like to talk on the phone, I talked to her for an hour and 20, 20 something minutes. And y'all, that, that seems like a lifetime to me. But we were talking about the goodness of God and how God saved her. Now she's associate pastor at the church she's in. She could have took the easy way out because the first time she went to the pastor and told her that she had been called to preach, he said, in this church? <laughs> no, we, we don't have that in this church. She said, that Baptist pastor sent me down. Said, okay. And then two years later, he had a, another woman, he was speaking, and, and he asked another woman to sit up and say, God is calling her to preach, she's going to preach in this church. And she said, God told you, you didn't go back. You just took the pastor and what he said, and didn't let me finish the work. She said, but now she's the second to the pastor. The second to the pastor. You know how good God is? Do you know how many people want to preach who ain't supposed to preach? You know how many preachers are preaching who ain't supposed to preach? God has to be the leader in this time. It may seem like it's green grass for those people. Oh, pastor get all that money. They ain't got to do nothing. They got deacons. Everybody's doing it. Pastor just got to preach on Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, right. It may <coughs> seem like it's green grass. It may seem like an easy street. But the Bible says, Wide is the way that leads to destruction. But straight is the way that leads to salvation. It may look easier, but it may get you to hell faster. We have to be men and women of God. I don't care what your title is, where you are in the church, 
You are the church. And you have to be that man, woman of God, that these people, when I say these people, I mean the unseen, are looking at. Are looking at. They're looking to find out what makes you different. How can you not have what I got? I got a fine car, I got a big bank account, drive around, and I got all these problems because I'm trying to keep all this stuff. I'm trying to keep a wife, I'm trying to keep this car, I'm trying to keep this money I got. And you look like you ain't got nothing. But you seem happy. You seem happy. Rebecca, and I won't just tell y'all more love about the president. Third chapter of Rebecca, he ain't got nothing, baby, too, man, look up there. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. Labor of the olive shall fail, the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off from the fold, then there shall be no herd in the stall. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. It doesn't matter what you have or what you have not got, You've got God. You've got a God on your side. I would rather face anything than face it alone without God. I would rather face destruction, death, than I would death with God than I would death without God. It may seem easy. The grass may look greener out there with, with no God you got to answer to. It may look easier to go around and not have to worry about hurting people's feelings or doing the right thing. Oh, you dropped that $20? Okay. Mine now. It may seem easy. The grass may look greener. But you will open your eyes in hell. Genesis. This is Genesis 13, 10 through 4. Oh. <laughs> Somebody gave him my son. <clears throat> and Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld of all the things of joy. And that was well watered every day before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest to God. Then Lot chose him all the plains of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves but one from the other. And Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the city of the plain, and pitched his tent for Sodom. Grass is green inside. He looked up and he saw now Abram and he was had their, their flocks all together and, but there started coming irritation between the two groups. So Abram decided, being the oldest, being the wisest, you just you decide. You go one way and I go the other. Whatever way you go, I'll go the other. Lot looks up, okay. Uh, uh all this green over here. They got cities where I can go and get stuff that I need. And I'll take this way. Okay. Grass may look green. But we know the story of what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. We know the story of what happened to Lot and what his decision got him. We know that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for the sinful living that they did. Look around. The sinful living that they did, you hear about it around here every day. Every day. Yesterday, on the news, no big secret to anybody, a teacher at a school in Tuscaloosa told the sight of a child under 12. Didn't have them at school. That school made that very clear. This ain't nothing to do with us. But suppose it did. We have to pray. We don't know who is taking care of our children. We don't know what they're running into. And some of it comes from family. Don't tell your mom and dad. You have to pray. 
You have to have a relationship with God and ask God to show you what you need to know. It's time for us to get off milk. It's time for us to start eating meat, eating something of substance. It's time for you to start reading. It's time for you to know about the goodness of God. Not about what told what Pastor told you, because Pastor can tell you that he's been real good to me. He's been real good. But you need to have a testimony for yourself. You need to be able to tell your child, your brother, your sister, that don't know God, what God, who God is to you. And not only tell him in words, but tell him in your everyday act. Tell him in the way you live. Because they're going to learn to watch a whole lot more of what you live than it is what you say. Every day you preach a sermon. I go to church, I, I, I do good. Come home and I send my off. Because that's what some people do. Some preachers, some teachers. They go to church. They're real Christians. Real religious, I need to say. During school. During church. But you let them go home. Bet you won't go and ask their children what they're doing. Because children, they'll tell it. They'll tell it. Oh, yeah, he take a couple of drinks before he go to bed. He said, help him sleep. Then him and him and his best friend get together and they drink a couple of drinks. He said, easy is mine. Come on now. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. It's about Jesus. If God called you to be a Christian, to be saved, sanctified, and filled you, you got all you need. You don't need to be looking for some green grass. You already got everything that you need. That was a song that came out this in the 60s, 70s, I think, don't let the green grass fool you. It started, the man starts talking about how when he and his girlfriend, wife, whoever it was, were together, they didn't have anything, they were close. But now they're struggling, and she went out to try to find somebody else. He said, don't let the green grass fool you. We were together, and we didn't have nothing. Didn't have no shoes, y'all believe me, see. When you get a little something, don't let that draw you away from God. We get a little something, and we go, I, I went out there and I, I got this. Yeah. Come on now. Come on. I prayed. Lord knows I prayed to pray. Because I, I didn't have much. But the Lord. He had a family with, with three miles of feet, four with mine. Had nothing but the Lord, but God elevated. If I look back now, I can see how He moved me, moved me from Montgomery to Tuscaloosa, and I was happy about that. Man. I reconnected with Sister Sandy over there. She wasn't my wife then, but we had reconnected. My phone bill would go down because I spent most of my little paycheck calling her. Back then, wasn't no toll. Uh, you had to pay for the numbers and call every minute. But I remember coming there, me and my dad. My dad was a preacher. You know, you try to get along with your in-laws. You try to get along with your in-laws. You try to make have a, them have a good impression of you. So when he asked me to go to church, I went. I tried to think of every excuse I could not to go. But I couldn't come up with one. So I went. And that was the beginning of the end of my running and running. That was the beginning of the end of my sinful nature. Oh, every now and then I still fall. But I ain't going to stay down and walk. I pray and get back in line because I know what, <laughs> where my bread is buried at. We have a God who loved us so much that he allowed his son to die for us. You think it wasn't easier for Jesus to say, y'all get me down. I, I don't want to do this to them. He could have called a thousand million angels to come down there and take him off their cross. Or he didn't have to get up there in the first place. But he prayed to his father, Father, if it be thy will, 
Remove this cup from me. But not my will. Your will be done. And then at the very end, when, when they were beating, when they were spitting, when they were gambling for his clothes, he said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They know not what to do. Don't let the green grass fool you. It may look easier, it may look better for you, but God, salvation is the way. And Jesus Christ is the door to salvation. We have to have a communication with God. We have to pray every day, three or four times a day. Pray while you drive. Pray while you're sitting. Pray while you're praying. You can never pray too much. Mary and Martha made a decision. Two sisters. When Jesus came to their house, Mary was all over him. Martha was running around, cleaning stuff, but that's why she came to Jesus. I'm doing all the work. Why don't you make her do some death me out here? Mary thought it was more important to be with Jesus. Jesus told Martha, yeah, you worry too much. You concerned about what things going on around here, but click me. I'm only gonna be with you for a while. She made a good choice. Have you made that choice to be with Jesus? Have you made the choice to say, I wanna be with Jesus? No matter what the place looks like on the other side, how green it is, how easy it looks to make a million dollars, how easy it looks to go and have a bunch of friends. You know, when you're out there in the world, People start drinking, smoking, whatever they're doing. Oh, they want you to do it. Hey, Jack, come on over here and take a drink. I know because I've been there. No because I did. Take a drink. We're going to drink. Then when you get over there, ain't you going to buy some? It's all, it's all good and fine till you join them. Then they want you to pay. Well, it looked so good when I was on the outside looking in. Everybody good. Everybody friendly. Ain't no fighting. They all happy. Remember when I get over here? And the ball runner, they want me to spend my last dollar. This ain't what I thought it would. Don't let the green grass fool you. Don't let hell be your eternal resting place. We just got this fine. This is what people out there y'all know. Fine cemetery. Nice looking sign out there. I ain't eager to go with it. But when God calls, I want to be ready. I don't have to. I don't want my whoever, whomever, preaches my funeral to have to lie. Cause I ain't gonna do it for nobody else. I talk all the way around it. I tell everybody else this is for you, but I can't do nothing for them. You need to be saved. If your loved one is here, they will tell you the same thing. You need to be saved. Remember the rich man in Latin? Rich man opened his eyes in hell. Lord, let me go back. Let me tell my siblings, my, my brother. Let, what? That prophet? That preacher? That teacher? They've been told. Just like you would. Don't let it fool you. Your soul will be required at some point. We were born in this world to die. We're born to leave here. And when we leave here, we want to do it in peace. Taking the easy way ain't never the easy way. We have to choose. And as for me, I choose the Lord. I choose joy over worry. I choose joy over whoo, my God over anything that's not like me. I want God to move everything out of my life that's not like me. There was a time in my life where I couldn't say that. I was, on, I was a Christian, I would say, but I was still wanting everything that I wanted. But now, if it's not like Jesus, 
I have to grow up to. If it's not like Jesus, I don't need it. If it takes me away from reading, praying, I don't need it. There's a love. That's the love of our Father for His children. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. So that whoever believes in Him will not be to have everlasting life. Do you want everlasting life today? Do you want to be secure in the knowledge that when you leave this place, you will leave it in peace and you will see Jesus in peace. The only way you have that is you have a relationship with God with the Lord, an intimate relationship. He already knows your heart. He knows his soul in your heart. He knows that some people didn't come here today because they found some dream. There are other people who had to work, they had things to do, and couldn't. But if, if they are like me, some people came, didn't come because they had excuse. Excuse won't get you there into heaven. Well, you know, Lord, I would have been there. Well, you know, Lord, I. You had to go help. You could help after. You could help before. God is proud If you call yourself a Christian, you call yourself a child of God. You shouldn't be acting like a child of God. You shouldn't be look like a child of God. I don't know if people think in that term. Do I look like my picture? Pastor up here with the Lord, looking all godly, looking all sanctified, and you turn around, he's dirty. He... Because I'm just, I'm just a dirty rag. Filthy rag. Without Christ, that's all we are. Without Christ. As I get rid of the people, you see, I can remember. Same job is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And he does that by taking our eyes off what's important. He shows us a pretty little thing. Some sparkling on this side. Some green grass on it. But I sure would like my cow to be in that green grass. So if I just move the Tom Sutherland's fence a little bit over here, then I can have that green grass over here and he'll never miss it. He got so many land, he will never miss it. So I'm just going to steal a little bit of his land. So he said, oh, you don't have to move that fence. You can get somebody up, you can have it done in 30 minutes. But, what well, you going to lift up your eyes when you leave here? I'm sure he may not know. He may not know. His family, after he's gone, may not never find out. But God doesn't sleep. Nor does he sleep. I'm going to let the green red food be chilled.